Hi, my name is Rogério da Silva, and I'll be showing you how to prepare for the ISTQB exam. This is the first section, is the fundamentals of testing. So it's a very basic uh, information there at the first uh, level, entry level. And uh, after this first section is going to be a quiz. So follow the quiz, practice uh, as much as you can. So the video is going to be in a short version video, just specific for you to get your head around and prepare for the exam. So if you're not sure about something, just go back, rewind, watch it again. And uh, I do hope uh, you do pass on the exam just like I did and uh, many others has passed already as well. So hang in there and uh, enjoy the videos. What we will we learn on this first section? Well, the first question is why do we test? Why we test things? Why we test software? I'll talk about that. Uh, what are the causes of uh, defects on software? What are the tester's objectives? What are you looking for? Between uh, differences between testing and debugging. Who looks after testing? Who looks after debugging? Uh, what are the principles of testing? What are the activities of testers in daily basis? Uh, retesting. What's, what does that mean? Uh, re resource triangle. As well, we'll talk about that. The completion criteria, when is the task is done, what you have to do, what the reports. Static and dynamic testing. Testing dependencies. And finally, code of ethics of a software tester. Okay, so the first question, why testing is necessary? Well, people make mistakes due to failability, but there is also other pressures. For example, attention to detail, time constraints, lack of knowledge and experience. So a software uh, program code is present everywhere. So from banking to e-commerce to cars, electrical appliances, arms, heating system, and many more. Uh, so uh, the failure results in financial loss, waste of time, loss of reputation, or in some worst cases, injury and even death. So the test is, reduces the risk of software failure. What are the causes of software defects? All defects start with a human error. For example, a typo, misunderstanding, lack of planning, capability, etc. So the tester's job is to expose the defect by causing a failure before the software gets to production. So an error, it's a human make, uh, make a mistake in code and or a development of a document specification. So associate error with a human. Um, and defect is a problem caused by an error. So fault a failure of the system or component caused by a defect. And a failure, it's a, don't only happens due to defects, but also environmental conditions, hardware problems, etc. What are the objectives of testing? Avoid and rectify errors, ensure that the key functional and non-functional requirements are examined, Testing is not about removing defects, but about notifying developers about them. Testing is also about reducing risk and releasing. So uh, testing can give you confidence in the quality of the software if it finds few or no defects. Tests can and must be measured. Typical measurements are number of defects found, number of failures in a given time period, reliability, Usability rating and maintainability. One thing Tesla has to understand is the difference between testing and debugging. So, debugging is a process used to identify causes of a bug in code and correct them. And testing is the exploration of the system in order to find defects. So, in a Dynamic testing, the tester observes the failure and then reports to the, the developer. Developers start to debugging, investigate and isolate the defect. 
the developer fix the defect, developer check fix works, and report the fix back to to the tester. And then only then uh, the tester can retest and confirm the failure no longer occurs. So what are the fundamental principles of testing? So number one, testing shows the presence of bugs, hence the need of testing. Number two, exhaustive testing, it's impossible. I mean, you know, some people say, oh, you have to test everything, but it's just testing all the combinations is uh, endless and time consuming. Number three, early testing saves money. That's true. As early as possible you can get on testing is better. Number four, Defect clustering happens. So if there is a, a bug in one part of the software, the chances are there are others that are related bug nearby. So bear that in mind. If you find one bug, just look around. Uh, there, there might be others next to it. Number five, the pesticide paradox. <laughs> Continuous uh, running the same test won't fix new bugs. So if you just repeat, repeat, repeat them on and on and on and on, you won't it doesn't mean it will fix the bugs number six testing is context dependent so uh you know testing you need to be based on something you need to be based on requirements story or something to to carry out your uh, tests number seven software with not no error is not necessarily way to be shipped so does it does it matches the user or business expectations? So you have to ask these questions. So not having error doesn't mean it's ready. This is the five fundamental test activities and tasks from planning to test closure. So the first part is the planning and control. So planning is to verify the mission of testing. Control is monitor, check progress, and take action. Second one down is analysis and design. Test analysis and test design is the testing objectives to create test conditions and test design. Third one down is implementation and execution. Activity where test procedure or scripts are in order, the environment is set up, and tests are run. Fourth is evaluation, exit criteria, and reporting. Activity where test execution is assessed against the defined objectives and finally is the test cl closure activities occurs at the project milestone such as release completion cancellation or maintenance release has been complete okay on this part is a retesting and regression tests this is a good example of a retest which is a running the test against after they fail and the bug have been in theory fixed. And regression is a running the test to check the cross impact of the defect fix in the whole functionality of system. So here's a good example. This is a, a login uh, from a website. So let's say someone's uh, identify a bug at this section here, which is a stay sign in. And then uh, the defect, the bug is being raised, passed on to the dev team, they fixed it, and uh, they pass back the fix to the test team. So the test team goes and retest, and uh, that section is fixed and, and done, right? So uh, after that, after this is being released, what you have to do is uh, part of your regression test, the regression pack, you test everything else just to double check and see if that fix has not uh, may affect the other functionalities next to it the resource triangle you might have heard this before in any other uh, projects uh, this is uh, used in the development project you you will hear hear about these at some point uh, in the places you work and on IS2QB foundation this is part of the exam so it's good to remember know that but this is easy to remember so um, the triangle refers to time cost and quality you can't have them all only pick two so you're given the option of fast good and cheap 
and uh, to pick any two. So he, in this triangle, fast refers to time required to deliver the product. Good is the quality of the final product. And cheap refers to the total cost of the design and building the product. So the triangle here reflects the fact that the three properties of a project are interrelated and it's not possible to optimize all three. One way you will always suffer. In other words, you have three options. Uh, this summarizes quite nicely. So design something quickly and into a high standard, but then you will not be cheap. Design something quickly and cheaply, but you will not be high quality. And design something with high quality and cheaply, but it will take a relatively longer time to complete the project. So here you go. Now you know the resource triangle. Well, in this part, we're talking about completion criteria. When it's done, uh, criteria you set at the beginning of the project that determines uh, when it's safe to stop testing. Ex exit criteria is connected to the test coverage, test case design technique adopted, risk level of the project varies from one test level to another. So, specified coverage has been achieved. No showstoppers or critical defects. There are very few non medium or low priority defects that don't affect the users of the product. If exit criterion has not met, the test cannot be stopped. The exit criteria has to be rebumped, or the time should be extended for test based on the quality of the product. Any changes to the test completion criteria must be documented and signed off by the stakeholders. And the test where can be released upon successful completion of the exit criteria. So here we go. Now you know about the exit criteria, the completion criteria when you taken out the tests. Okay, this is a static and dynamic testing. What are the differences between them two? So it's static. Testing where the code is not exercised, for example, in document specification analysis, reviews, even on code itself, can be done as review by humans carrying out manual examination of documents or static analysis of the code in software mod models uh, by using automation tools. And dynamic uh, kind of testing that exercise the program with some test data. Dynamic testing is performed by executing software on the test and comparing actual with uh, expected results. The definition of uh, test independence is quite important. So developers are least independent, whereas outsourced testing companies are more independent because they don't take uh, defects as criticism. So several levels of independence can be defined as shown below. Uh, test designed by the persons who uh, wrote the software on the test. So this is the least, uh, you know, independent. Uh, test designed by another person with the development team. Test designed by a person from a different organization group, an independent test team or a test special specialist. Um, for example, usability or performance test. And uh, the the more likely one to be good is a test designed by a person from a different organization or company outsourcing or certification by external body. So he you can identify which ones the the more likely to be the least independent and the, the more independent uh, testers. When you decide to become a software tester and you go for the IS2QB exam and you pass, you have to comply with the code of ethics uh, decided by the IS2QB. Um, I think it's quite important. I think those uh, elements here describe it. It's, uh, it's down to an individual. But you might do this already and it's, it's down to your own uh, ethics, your own way to work with people and, uh, and with the client. Uh, I will uh, read out. Uh, you can pause and read yourself if I'm reading too fast. 
Um, but basically, this is for as described on top. It's involvement in soft in software tests enables individuals to learn co confidential privileged information. So therefore, a code of ethics is necessary. So, public testers shall act consistently with the public interest. Client and employer testers shall act in a manner that it, it is in the best interest of the client and employer, consistent with the public interest. Product testers shall ensure that the deliverable they provide on the products and system they test meet the highest professional standard possible. Judgment testers shall maintain integrity and independence in their professional judgment. Management, test manager and leaders shall subscribe to and promote an ethical approach to the management of the software test. Profession, testers shall advance the integrity and reputation of the profession consistent with the public interest. Colleagues, testers shall be fair to one and su supportive of their colleagues and promote cooperation with software developers. Self, testers shall participate in lifelong learning regarding the practice of the profession and shall promote an ethical approach to the practice of the profession. Now you made it, you complete the first section. So first section out of six. And this is what we you've learned so far. I mean, you know, you learn a bunch of, of information uh, that's gonna be uh, beneficial for you uh, is 2 could be exam I'm, I'm proud of you uh, very good so uh, this is what you learned so far uh, why testing is necessary common causes of software defects what is testers objectives differences between testing and debugging fundamentals principles of testing five fundamental test activities and tasks from planning to closure why retesting is one of the most important tasks in testing. Resource triangle, remember that, time, money, and quality. You can only have two. Definition of completion criteria, when the project is ended. When carry, carry out uh, static and dynamic testing. Uh, why is important to get testing independence. And why code of ethics is necessary. So if you can answer all these questions and then you can refresh your uh, memory on all the topics we discussed about. Remember, you can always go back, you can uh, rewind the, the videos and watch it all over again if you didn't understand something. Okay, now the first section ended. So I want to say thank you for you to, uh, you know, to complete the first section and it comes to down to today's end. It's still five to go. So this is the first part. So hang in there. There's so much more to, to come. So now I just wanted to uh, make sure that uh, you are happy with what you, you've learned so far and uh, to uh, verify what you learned, what you understood. Uh, I, I have attached a quiz down below. So there must be a link there, a section where you can uh, get the quiz and you can download and you can practice the quiz based on this first section only. Uh, so if you have any questions, please do uh, make questions here. I will, I'll answer as soon as I can. Uh, any comments, any criticism as well. Uh, I, I believe that everything you do is a work in progress. So things that I can improve here and make it better as well, please uh, let me know as well. I'll be grateful for that. And if you really like it, so thumbs up. Click there on your like and, and share with your friends and colleagues or who is someone you, you may think that wanted to uh, watch these videos and uh, as the same as you and myself, just pass on IS2QBXM, okay? So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you.